Talk to us about what you're seeing in terms of levels of confidence. If you cannot get the supplies to build, but indeed everyone's paying a lot more for them, are you net more positive than usual? You know, it's sort of like uh, we're coming on the Christmas season. Paraphrase Charles Dickens, it's the best of times and the worst of times. I mean, the demand is there. Household formations are high. People are still moving out of cities into smaller markets, so the demand all around the country is very high for housing. That's the good news. The bad news is, as we were talking about before we went on air, the supply chain is such a mess right now that builders will pull the permits and get ready, but they can't start building until they know they're going to be able to stick to their construction schedules, and that is almost impossible possible to, to guarantee right now. And we've heard from so many of the home builders in their earnings reports, the executives talking about just that here. Is there sort of a break point where they actually start to revise down, I guess, their plans for what they plan to build? Or can they sort of stick by those plans and just elongate, I guess, the timetable? Uh, I think there, there, there's a break point. At, and I'm not sure what that is because we've never seen anything like this before. Mm -hmm. But at some point, they're going to have to look and say, until we know we're going to be able to get lumber, until we know we're going to be able to get concrete, let alone appliances and the things that go into wow. the finishing of a house, uh, they, they, they won't be able to, to, to stick to a plan for, for too long if they're not sure of that. In the meantime, I'm curious about who's eating the cost for all of these. When you look at some of the single family homes, the multifamily homes, I mean, rents are rising, so maybe that's helping the multifamily business. But if you're in this business of construction and you're looking at the rising lumber costs and the rising concrete costs and the rising labor costs, are those builders able to pass those on to the consumer? You know, in some facets of the market, you can, and by facet, I mean uh, the higher end uh, homes, sure, you can pass that on to the consumer. The, the starter homes, the first time home buyer market, which is what really drives the housing market as a whole, much more difficult to pass on to the consumers. And therefore, we're worried about a slowdown uh, if we don't get the supply chain uh, back in order real soon, hopefully by the spring building season. We laugh that Remain's finally getting his sofa, but anecdotally, it feels we are unplugging things ever so slightly. Do you feel that way in the building sector at all? Right now, I'm getting anecdotally stories from builders all around the country that they're not going to build until they know they can get the materials. Um, they're having problems even signing contracts with their customers because they can't guarantee that the house that they are contracting is going to be buildable at the price that they're signing a contract for. They're putting escalator clauses in. They're putting delay clauses in. Uh, right now, it's, it's never been done. We've never seen this before, and it's something that they're trying to adapt to uh, to try and save the market as best we can. What about the labor dynamics? I mean, we've heard from some of the home builders they've had issues with wages. There's, it's much more competitive environment across industries now. You've obviously had some longer-term issues with immigration that have sort of cut into the labor supply. How are they dealing with that? We've, we've had problems with labor way before the pandemic and actually even before the Great Recession. Uh, you're seeing uh, Americans have traditionally told their kids you're going to go to a four-year college, you're going to get a degree, you're not going to work in the construction. The reality the reality is that construction jobs are very good jobs. Uh, you can set your own hours. You can even own your own company much earlier in life than if you go to college and are saddled with some debt there. So uh, we've been trying to convince the American people uh, that, we, that construction is a good career to get into. We're having some luck, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. um, but the real key, as you mentioned, is immigration. Mm -hmm. Immigrants have built this country uh, from time immemorial. And until we get an immigration <laughs> policy, that recognizes home building or construction as a skilled trade and lets them come into the country, we're still going to have a shortage. Talk to us geographically. Mm. We in New York City have heard about the mass exodus to the suburbs, down south to the southeast. What have you learned, again, maybe anecdotally, about who is moving where and is that movement permanent? You know, it's, it's hard to tell if it's permanent yet because we're still really coming out of the pandemic. But it actually started prior to the pandemic. The exodus from the cities really started uh, when, unfortunately, the violence erupted in the cities right before the start of the pandemic. Where are people moving to? People in New York are moving to western Massachusetts. They're moving to the Catskills. Uh, they're even moving as far north as Vermont. As long as you can get a plane flight back into the city, However often your employer tells you you have to show up in the office, 
it's easier to live somewhere else, it's cheaper, and some would say the quality of life is better. Uh, so in the Northeast, you're seeing people move into upstate New York and New England more than, we're, and then in the past. In the West, uh, Idaho, Boise, Idaho is one of the fastest growing cities in the country right yeah. now. Um, Reno, Nevada, uh, places that are small, mid-sized, they still have a lot of quality of life, a lot of entertainment and culture, but they're more affordable uh, and, and it's just easier to live there. So we're seeing that all over. The Southeast has been a popular place for a long time, uh, but that's seen a real uptick. The two Carolinas are, have been the hottest markets yeah. even since before the Great Recession.